1986, George Merritt of the Winnipeg Victorias was the first ever hockey goaltender to wear pads to protect his legs during the Stanley Cup playoffs. He and those who followed him used cricket pads. Wider pads specifically for ice hockey didn't come about until the 1920s. This company spends $40,000 a year on research and development of goalie pads. It redesigns its pads every two years to upgrade to the latest materials and construction. Each goalie pad has 100 components. The factory uses hundreds of metal dies to cut parts to make pads in 15 sizes. Workers position the appropriate dies on the material. A hydraulic machine applies roughly the weight of four elephants, forcing the dies through up to four layers at once. Here it's a synthetic water repellent material called PU leather. The machine also cuts various types of foam for structure, protection and comfort. And it creates holes called eyelets for laces or buttons. Here the machine cuts soft, low-density foam which acts as a shock absorber against the force of the puck. Workers sew the pads using industrial strength nylon stitching. To protect the PU leather, they sew on a 3 mm layer of foam and zippers on openings that will be packed with shredded foam for a snug fit. They use a 1.2 cm thick layer of spongy foam to line the player's knee and calf areas for flexibility and comfort. The stitching is purely decorative. The factory often embroiders the player's name on the goalie pads to identify the gear if it's lost. This automated embroidery machine has 12 computer-guided heads. They use up to 40 different thread colors. Every year, this factory produces up to 3,500 pairs of goalie pads. The players wear an array of corporate logos on their pads. It's all part of the commercial nature of the game and the industry. Now they sew on a zippered pocket which, when filled with foam, will protect the calf area. They use water-resistant fabric to cover the back of the player's leg and line the area with low-density foam to absorb the puck's impact. Then they attach flaps, called knee razors, to protect the knee area. Good thing given that pucks will slam the goalie at a speed of up to 160 kilometers an hour. Next, they sew the front and back parts of the pads together. Then they hot glue a sandwich of harder foam for structural support, soft foam for shock absorbency, and an even softer foam for comfort. This padding forms the guts of the pad. Using crimpers, workers fasten the pads together temporarily. Then they use an 18 cm long needle with a diamond-shaped tip to sew the layers together. The worker threads the layers, uniting them into one piece. This process is called lasting. Workers now pack the outside of the goalie pad with more rigid foam for structure and softer foam for comfort. They use clamps to fasten the boot area together temporarily while inserting shredded foam shredded because it's easier to squeeze in. Then using a specialized sewing machine, they sew the outermost shell of the pad. This is considered the toughest part of the assembly since it joins layers as thick as two and a half centimeters. They use pliers to hold the pieces tightly together during the 45 minutes or so that it takes to sew just one pad. After trimming the excess from the ends, workers cover them with a strip of PU leather, a process called capping. They attach the strip using 13 overlapping stitches, a durability feature that gives the goalie pads long life. Next, they insert a removable knee guard, which can be adjusted or replaced later on. Using a rivet machine, they attach a leather strap to an adjustable nylon buckle. It's an important component. This is what fastens the pads to the leg. And at a price of nearly $1,600 a pair, you too can shut out those speeding pucks with confidence.